I used to play table tennis before I skated. Table tennis is what the fucking ping pong snobs call it. I was obsessed with that shit though. Fucking obsessed, like Forrest Gump obsessed. I played until like, I forget, I was like maybe 13. I won the state championship for the 16 and under, but then we moved and I, I, didn't, I couldn't get to the, uh, the place where I used to like train or whatever, play. You know, and then I picked up skating like, like right, or right after that, you know. Yeah, I will whoop that ass. We have a table at our park, and Dylan Reeder is gnarly. Dill, Ave, Brian Hansen. Like, those guys take it really seriously. It gets heated, man. There's like a basket of paddles, and a lot of them are just fucking destroyed for, you know, guys playing and just focusing paddles and shit. A lot of skaters that are really good that pick something else up, they usually excel at that too. Bebo can juggle, like does everything good. Golf, basketball, foosball. We were sitting at the park one day, we were bored, and he's like, Mark, bro, let's go get a unicycle, dude. It's like, a unicycle? He's like, hell yeah, dude. Like, can you ride one of those? And I'm like, nope. And he's like, dude, we're gonna learn. Out of nowhere. So we go down to the bike shop, go halvesies on a fucking unicycle. To this day, that was a year ago, I can't ride that thing. He learned how to ride it in 20 minutes. He's good at everything. So when I was 16, like living on living in North Carolina, I knew these two dudes that had moved out to California like the year before or something. You know, it was like big talk around town for like a week or so, but they moved. And then one day we're, we're skating at this gas station and uh, these dudes drive up. They get out and we're like, Holy fuck, like those are the dudes that moved to California. Long story short, like they had an open seat on the way back and I, they were like, hey, do you wanna come out to California? I'm just like, yeah. So I bailed, literally, like went home, told my mom, I'm like, peace. She gave me 40 bucks. Like her son is moving to California. She's like, here honey, here's 40 bucks. And I'm like, sick. My neighbor gave me 40 bucks, so I had $80. <laughs> $80 didn't get us to Tennessee. So what's funny is these dudes knew, I guess the, how they made it back across the United States, they knew how to do the tape dollar thing. Have you ever seen anyone do that? The magic dollar, the tape dollar is, let me pull out a fucking bill here. The tape dollars, you take a uh, thick packing tape, and you can't do this anymore anyways, but uh, you take thick packing tape, you put it like right on the border, it can't touch the ink, one side here, another side there, and then you you have a tail basically on the dollar and it's made of like super sticky, thick packing, clear packing tape. So what you do is you put the dollar in a vending machine and you're holding onto the tape. The fucking vending machine takes the dollar, registers it, and then you yank the dollar back out. So the vending machine still thinks it's got that dollar. You've got a dollar registered, you, you get something that's like 25 cents, like a pack of gum. So you get the pack of gum and you get your 75 cents change. Now if you keep doing that, you've got all the money out of the vending machine and all the snacks that you want. So these dudes were stealing money from vending machines and like cigarette machines and whatever. And they would like do the salt water in the dollar bill thing. Have you ever seen that one? Warm water with like a shit ton of salt in a squeezy bottle, like a sport bottle. You shake it up and you, in the little dollar bill thing, you squeeze it in there. The machine like short circuits or something and it dumps all the money out and then dumps all the drinks out. The machine just like loses controls of its bowels or whatever. They did that all the way across the country. That's how they got back. So I get in the car with them and we're on the way to California. They kind of tell me what they're doing and I was like, isn't that like super sketchy? You can go to jail. They're like, you just keep a lookout, bro. We're not going to jail. So we did that all the way across the country. That's how I got to California. Gallon of gas by gallon of gas, taco by taco, burger by burger. We slowly made it across the country. So sketchy. But it worked, and I'm, I'm getting a free lunch right now. Pretty sick. Pretty sweet. Yeah, I lived with uh, Jerry and Louie uh, different times. We lived in a house with three girls. One of them was into chicks, and she had like this little like sex, like weird sex kit with like chains and stuff. And she would chain, there was a big tubby girl that would come to the house. She would chain her to the floor in her room. She had like, she had bolts in the floor, and she would hook the chains to them. She would chain this big girl to the floor. For being my height, like she's like 5'10", 5'11". She's probably 2, 250. Just a big Stay puff Marshmallow girl. You could hear that shit going on at night, like across the hall from my room. You just hear fucking chains on that hardwood floor, dude, like ch -ch -ch. I don't know what Nartec is. 
but I'm stoked that I'm one of the pioneers, I guess. Grind a little longer, maybe? Slide a little fast. I don't know. Oh, it says I'm one of the pioneers of switch stance skating. Bullshit. That's Mark Gonzalez and Solomon Aga. And Car I want to say Karma, Kashif, and uh, Dave LaRue. Switch vert in the early 90s. Um, I was shooting an ad with Ed Dominic. There was gonna be a sequence on the page and there's gonna be this blurry photo in the back and I wanted to, to kind of be like the, you couldn't tell really what it was. So he's like, ah, oh, fuck it, MJ, what do you wanna shoot? And I'm like, dude, just shoot me naked covered in shaving cream. He's like, fuck it, all right. It was just fucking like so hilarious and gross. <laughs> I was like gonna go into the bathroom and I had to like go in the kitchen because there was no carpet and I had to wait there. And that's when my roommate came in with the camera. He just started filming me. I'm like, oh, dude, come on, dude. And I was like, fuck you. <laughs> and then the shaving cream, like, flapping off the balls. Yeah, that's just being young and just being a goof. That was fun. I was in Japan one time with Kareem, like Markovich, Kareem. I forget what we were at. We were out there for like this contest or something, I think. We went to a, a female wrestling match. So it's like real deal, like chicks wrestling in a ring at some point like one of the girls in the ring like one of the wrestlers or whatever was just like goes to the turnbuckle and was like pointing at me or whatever like you 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 come here come here come here and everyone's like oh shit mj fucking shit woo go down there so i go down to the ring she's like come up here i'm like what i was just like the fuck i'm not getting in the fucking ring with you she's like no she's like playing all sweet so i get up there she fucking grabs me and starts beating on me She's like, what the fuck did you say about me, motherfucker? I'm just random dude, she singled out of the crowd and she's like, what do you fucking say about me, you fucking American? Like, where? Starts beating my ass. <laughs> and I'm like, ah, fuck, ah! And then all these people rush, they rush the ring and shit, and like they're pulling her off. She's like, by this time, she's out of her mind. I'm like shocked. I was like, I just had a chick like beating my ass on a wrestling ring, you know, <laughs> being in Japan. And I was just like, they're like the bouncers came and like, and Kareem jumped in there, and all these people were just like fucking pulling this chick off, like whatever. It ended up being like, like the lady was, the lady was crazy. Like she ended up apologizing to me, but she was fucking out of her mind. Like we went back into the dressing room and she was butt ass naked. She didn't know what she was, she just was just like, thought somebody in the audience was talking shit about her. Oh, she's wrestling. She's like, oh, I'm so sorry, that was so funny. Oh. But just, mm butt ass naked. You talk about like nut job. So yeah, I got my ass beat in Japan by a female wrestler. That's pretty sick. I do pick the music for my parts. In the case of Fully Flared, I didn't know I was gonna have a three song part. Over the course of, you know, four years, like you're just kind of going through all these different songs and stuff like that. And I gave Ty three song ideas. You know, I was like, oh, this Fisher Spooner's sick, this Q Lazarus is sick, you know, and then the She Wants Revenge. I wasn't around for the editing process for my part. So I didn't have any input in my part and it came out like it was 10 minutes long or something. A little too long in my opinion. But yeah, I, I, I picked all those songs. But for uh, Pretty Sweet, no, I haven't, uh, I haven't picked a song yet. I don't even know if I have a part. And she goes, don't die on my plane. I look up at her, I was like, I'm trying not to. <laughs> you know, like. They wouldn't let me skate or nothing and they'd let me come watch my friend if I wear my helmet and watch him. He stands up, he's what the fuck? I mean, he's yelling. I, I honestly, and like he basically yelled me out the door. 